so we will begin. Amen. Um, how about if you open your Bible tonight? I guess I don't know exactly where I want to go with this, but and I'm just going to try to it'll be edifying, uh, but it's scripture, and it includes what we'll be talking about, the Holy Spirit. We began last week talking a little bit about the Holy Spirit coming. Uh, of course, during the time of Pentecost, you remember that Pena in the Greek means 50, so it's 50, uh, 50 days after Christ ascended uh, to the Father that the Holy Spirit would be poured out. I think I related or mentioned that uh, the Bible, um, during the time of the giving of the law, it's the same season as the day of Pentecost uh, that the Jewish rabbis believed and taught that uh, during the giving of the law, that the Jewish people heard the law in their own languages, just like we hear in the upper room about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and these men spoke and uh, were given languages for all those nations that were round about, all the folks that had come to the festival, uh, to the feast, and so on, uh, heard the gospel preached and the praises of God in their own languages and were amazed at what was done. Uh, anyway, so it correlates, and you think sometimes if you don't hear some of these, it's, it's a brand new thing. Uh, it may or may not be. Uh, just like I see a lot of people posting that this is the beginning of the church, and it's really not because the gathering of the saints, the people of old, uh, Israel and so on, who were called the priests of God, they were doing the very same thing. And they were from the time of back there in Egypt when they were called out because God had chosen them, said, uh, let my people go that they may serve me. Uh, Israel, my firstborn son. And so as we go through these things, a lot of times we want to make everything about us. And it's really not. It's about God doing what he's going to do and bringing his will to pass. We are blessed to be a part of it. Right? Uh, so if we look at things that way all the time, uh, we have a much different outlook on what goes on. I know we also, uh, Sunday talked about in James, I read you the portion of scripture in James chapter 4, uh, verse 5 through 10, and I read it to you in the NLT, where it said at the end there about washing your hands, purifying your hearts, because your loyalties were divided between God and the world. And a lot of men are preaching right now about Babylon and how Babylon is drawing everybody's attention. And so I, I'm hearing this now and saying, wow, I'm glad I brought this up. Uh, a couple things I related, I think Alistair Begg, I heard him talk just recently about uh, we don't understand how evil evil is. I've been saying that for a long time. Maybe he has too. I don't know. I just happened to catch it. So it's not a phrase that's coming out of the blue somewhere. It's by the Holy Spirit and just the, the evil and the darkness of what's going on. Uh, so in all that, you know what? I know a lot of people will say, well, you're always talking about the heart. Well, we got to make sure our hearts are secure in Christ. And that's how we make it to the end. And there's a lot of the things of the world, uh, even now, people are being put in positions where they've got to choose uh, what they're going to do. Like we know in the scripture, it says, choose you this day whom you'll serve. Well, do I keep serving this? Or do I keep taking the benefit of this? Uh, or do I say... Um, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to serve the Lord, and whatever happens, you know, I'm in the Lord. Uh, you can go back to Daniel 1, and it's, it's, I was reading some things out of Daniel 8 and 9 and 10, and then all of a sudden I just went back to Daniel 1 again. Remember, think about these people who were put into dispersion, right? Uh, they were driven out of the land. They were taken captive and taken back to Babylon. And you think about teenagers. We talk about teenagers in COVID. And yes, it's very traumatic. And 
it was traumatic to a lot of adults. But look at how Daniel and those three young men operated in the midst of being taken away, possibly from their very families, from their nation, from what they were used to. They weren't just having barriers put up in school. They were taken from the school. They were taken from their lifestyle and put into a whole different issue of life. And in that place, in Daniel chapter 1, remember, they were to eat of the king's portion. But it says that Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. How many of these things in the world, we, uh, did I read uh, Malachi, uh, that you not deal treacherously, I think, on Sunday morning? Not treacherous in your spirit? And so how many people uh, in some of these things, they're, they're going outlandishly like warrior, you're not taking this away from me, you're not changing that. Listen, I'm one that used to show you all how some of these other religions and socialism and so on would try to take and change our constitution to take away your rights. Well, it's happened in other nations and it's happened multitudes of times in other nations. And so if it ends up happening here, of course you stand up for everything you can. We're standing up for children and some of these things that are going into the school systems and the library books and uh, these books, I might have mentioned this, that you can order from Walmart that are totally perverted comic type things in these books with these little kids. Uh, you stand up against that kind of stuff. You're going to try to defend everything. You stand up against tyranny because that's what our founding fathers did in their belief in Christ too. Uh, and it's happened in other places. But for us to go over the edge and become like the crusaders became to where they just slaughtered now everybody that might not go along with them, that's not where we're to be. So Daniel purposed in his heart and listen. We can talk to these young folks and we can talk to ourselves. You're getting older, you're getting tired. You know, have you gotten weary with some things, uh, of dealing with some things and looking at some issues? And you know, you watch the news and you sit there and you go almost like, blah, 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 blah. you know, you don't want to hear another thing because you've watched so many things. You know what America was like. You know what your lifestyle was like. You know what discipline was. You know what morality was and all these things are changing and you can be totally devastated if you allow yourself but when Daniel was put in the position where the king's uh, servant told them what they had to eat he said to him would you please let us do this and then show the king the benefit of it. He sort of made a deal with believing God that I'm believing God, God's going to take care of us and we're going to be in better condition than those people who eat of the king's uh, meal and drink of the king's drink and so on. And remember, their names were being changed, right? You know, the names they were given were all names of false gods or something in the realms of false gods. And then they were expected to be as the servants like the rest of the people were, uh, although they were the wisest and so on, chosen out even among the king's own people. So where would you and I be in that? You may say, well, Daniel and them were all pretty wise. They were young students and so on, and we're a little bit older. But you know what? The same way God, remember Daniel said, it's not my ability, but the God of heaven allowed me to recite to you what your dream was when he talked to Nebuchadnezzar and also the interpretation of the dream. And so he glorified God. He didn't say it's me and my wisdom. So could any of you say, if I come up with something like that, it's got to be God because it's not me and my wisdom? Some of us aren't even finished education in school or whatever college degrees or any of that kind of stuff maybe even good grades when we were in high school none of that and yet the Lord can give us wisdom just like he did Daniel 
Because remember, he is no respecter of persons. But you've got to remember all the time that Daniel purposed something in his heart. I've said before, and we've heard this from time I was growing up in the Lord, there's a lot of things you may have to say to somebody. I can't be there because I value this more. Like we do church, you come together for church, and I know some things happen. There's no, no, I'm not trying to point anybody for any issues or anything like that. But there was a lady one time, and it was like anything came up on Sunday, it was that instead of church. Like, well, they need me, or I have to do this, or, and you th say like, well, have you purposed in your heart that you're going to serve God more than all that? Of course, everybody always says, well, you know, I talked to them and so on, and it was an okay situation. But then you look at, like, how much have you really grown spiritually in this mindset? And you wonder, was it beneficial? Was it the Lord saying, yes, you have to, you know, I want you there and all these kinds of things. You know, we can make the Lord say anything we want him to, right? <laughs> Remember when I told you about my Jesus puppet? I bring him along with me because I can make him say whatever I want because he don't speak unless I speak. And so we can do all these kind of things and it's the Lord. Uh, and again, I'm not saying that. I know folks haven't been in church on Sunday here lately for various reasons and some of them, that's totally fine. I'm not saying that whatsoever. Um, <clears throat> but Daniel purposed in his heart, he wasn't going to go after what the king was offering. All I think about when I say that is because he knew the king of kings. Amen. And it was a greater calling. And so what happened, because he chose the Lord, God, God caused the king to favor him which seems totally outlandish when you think that the king was a <laughs> heathen right but yet he saw the wisdom and he saw something to be treasured and so daniel of course ends up in a high position the other three end up and working under him and so on in the kingdom uh, it's just great to read through that over and over uh, purpose in your heart and so Daniel purposed in his heart that he wasn't going to defile himself you know I mentioned a while back you might remember this when I was in Israel and I was at the uh, Jewish Federation dinner and so I'm sitting at a table with a bunch of folks I don't know they're always all Jewish folks that have positions in government and media and all these different things and so they had a glass of wine and the one fellow next to me said, or two people over, he said to me, I noticed you didn't touch the wine. And he was upset about it. And I said, well, sir, I had a problem with that, and so I don't touch that for anybody. I didn't say it to be rude, but I was saying I've made my decision of why I don't touch that stuff and why I tell other people not to because I've seen them when they're tipsy. And they're supposed to be believers, and they're just taking care of that little, you know, they had an infirmity in the flesh. <laughs> they, they cracked a fingernail, and they were so distraught, they took the whole bottle. But now they're not thinking about their fingernail anymore. They're thinking and singing tiny bubbles. <laughs> so I said, sir, I had a problem with that, so I don't touch that. And I wasn't worried about what he thought. I hoped he would say more, and I would try to talk to him a little bit more, but that didn't happen. He just dropped it at that. So, yeah, we talked about your, uh, our loyalties, ours. I, yeah, I didn't mean to say yours, ours, our loyalties uh, between God and the world. Can't let them be divided. Again, can't serve God and mammon. So the, tonight I just wanted to talk about um, the disciples and Jesus after the resurrection, before the resurrection, and way back even before Jesus uh, entered into his ministry. You remember John the Baptist said, one is coming greater than I who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Uh, I think that was in uh, Luke chapter 3. And uh, Matthew chapter 3, and he said that very clearly, 
Uh, one is going to come and baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He, at one point he talked about, I'm not worthy to even unloose the latchets of his shoes. I'm going to baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Well, we know the Holy Ghost is God, right? Uh, Jesus was God in the flesh. So we're going to have an impartation of God in our lives and be baptized in that to where we're totally submersed in the Holy Ghost or filled with the Holy Ghost as it refers to in many places. We're going to have the Lord in our lives. And you think about some of these men and what they did, uh, even Daniel standing up for all that he did. I know we don't read about the infilling of the Spirit, but the Bible does talk about men that had the Spirit. And of course, the prophets, the Holy Spirit came upon them, they spoke, and then they went on. And the Holy Spirit went back to the Father. But with this, you remember John said about the one you see, that God told him, the one you see the Holy Spirit come upon and remain, he's the one. So when we're talking about the Holy Spirit, the festival is Shavuot, and then we call it Pentecost. But so during the... Uh, Shavuot, uh, we know the lamb came, right, to take away our sin. I guess I can't be seen here. Let me do it this way. The lamb came to take away our sin, but now the lamb who was slain has gone back to the Father, uh, resurrected. So the symbol for Shavuot is two loaves of bread. And you know it's not unleavened bread. This is where God told him take two loaves of leavened bread. And so this is the symbol of the festival. And then we talk about uh, us in the Pentecost and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the upper room. So just a couple of scriptures preparing uh, as we, we, we've all been filled with the Holy Spirit, I would say. Am I correct? Yes. But let me ask you, how much are you allowing him to work in us in that? How much am I allowing? And sometimes... Uh, you may think, well, like I sit down sometimes, I'm tired just like anybody else, and I'll sort of be dozing off a little bit or just sort of closing my eyes to catch some rest. And all of a sudden, things start coming to mind. It's as though, you know, there's stuff just rising up, memories of this and what the Lord did in that and how to pray about this or just to start praying for somebody. And uh, so the Holy Spirit is here in us. But if we don't ever allow him to work like that in us, uh, just like we talk about praying in the spirit and with the understanding, and I've mentioned that so many times when we come on Saturday mornings and we pray in the spirit and we spend an hour and a half or whatever it is, two hours here, that the Lord brings all kinds of things to remembrance, people and situations. Now, if that's happening, is that what I'm praying? Because he said to pray in the spirit and with the understanding. And so sing in the spirit and sing with the understanding. Even when we sing in the high praises of God, there's an understanding if you'll open up to that. And I don't mean any mystical thing. The Holy Spirit will make known how you're worshiping. And, you know, various traits of the Lord at that point in time. Or, you know, some of the glory of the Lord to where you'll be moved by him. So you remember this, it's in Luke 24, verse 45 through 50. Uh, are we on up there? Okay. And we're on down here. Okay, thank you. He opened their understanding. This was the road to Emmaus, that they might understand the scripture. After the, is this after the road to Emmaus? I guess I don't remember right offhand. He opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, and he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins, which is what I talked about Sunday, should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And he said to them, You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem 
until you be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany. He lifted up his hands and he blessed them. So he gave them a command. Wait for the promise of my father, tarry in the city of Jerusalem. Now, what did, they, what did they do at that point in time? Some of them went to Bethany. Some of them went back to Galilee. And they probably wondered why they weren't filled with the Holy Spirit. They didn't receive the promise of the Father. They weren't where he told them to be. And so a lot of times just being where God tells us is important because that's where something's going to happen on our behalf. So he said, Terry, in the city of Jerusalem, until you be endued with power. So I guess I want to say for all of us again, how's the power working in us? The power can quicken our holy, I mean, our, our physical body. Uh, the power can bring things to remembrance. The power can stir us up, even in our older ages and our weariness at times. Remember Daniel and them, the stresses they must have been under, but yet they kept themselves. And you think about, we have stress in life, we have stress in things now, uh, when they tell you there's going to be a shortage of baby formula. Uh, you don't have babies now, but maybe your grandchildren or your uh, you know, great-grandchildren and so on are infants and need formula, so what would you do? Would you try to find formula? Would you try to stock up on formula? Uh, and so on, and, and try to get it to them? Well, and so here we are in these stressful times, we have the ability to stock up of the spirit, stock up of this in doing, uh, so that we're filled and full. So he told them, because remember, he's gonna leave them he tells them, I won't leave you in one interpretation as, as orphans or as it says in most of the places, comfortless. I'm not going to leave you out here on your own. I know you've only had a few years with me. I've trained you. Uh, there's going to be trials and temptations and things. So I won't leave you comfortless. I won't leave you as without a father like an orphan. I will send uh, the comforter. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. So listen, a lot of times in our con conversation, are we conversating with that power? Or are we conversating with just like our mindset in the world sometimes is? Is that how we're thinking? Is that how we're responding? Is that how we're approaching things? Is that how we're purposing in our own selves as we go through these things that are before us? You've gone through a lot of things already. Has the Lord brought you through them all? Some of them hurt. Some of them were agony. Some of them left you uh, maybe different than you were before a little bit. Remember Jacob, he limped because he met the Lord. And so he was different. And some people might have said, well, gee, before you wrestled with the Lord, you walked as good as all of us, and now you limp. Well, what's better, to have the Lord and a limp or to walk normal and be without the Lord? Is it better to have two eyes and be alive and yet go to hell in the end, as Jesus said? Or is it better to... I had something terrible happen. I lost an eye, but I'm going to be with the Lord. Amen? So, Acts chapter 1, verse 4, it says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. These are all the areas where he's promising the coming of the Holy Spirit. He says, But wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, you've heard of me. Remember, everything Jesus said was from the Father. And so as he's telling them about the promise of the Father, you've heard it of me, so you know everything else I said is of the Father. He's going to do what I'm telling you, which you've heard of me, for John truly baptized, and Jesus refers back to John, 
baptized with water, but you shall be with, baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And you know, this is uh, <clears throat> where they said to him, Lord, are you not going to put America back in first place? Is our jobs all going to come back from Mexico and China and factories and mills? And Oh, no, they said Jerusalem. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, are you going to restore all this? Why, life before COVID was so much better, and now there's all these things happening. Lord, will you now restore the way it was before COVID? Will you now restore before this woke thing happened? Will you now restore before, you know, morality seemed to dissipate from a lot of people? Will you restore these things, God? They came and asked him, Lord, will uh, thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? He said unto them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has in his own power, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And what was that power for? Was it to get more money? Was it to build a bigger house? Was it to take more vacations, lay back and relax? You know, just be nice. It says it's the power and you shall be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in all Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. You shall receive power. In all this, you may be kind of quiet-mannered, but you still have the power of the Holy Ghost working in you. You still have the power of prayer. You have the power to call on the angels in real situations where there's a need. Uh, not like angels, I don't really want to walk across my yard to get that hose over there. Would you go over and get it for me? Uh, because, listen, there's lots of things and I can remember now, if you're in a desperate situation, I don't know, I've heard some of you testify to this too. You're going to run out of gas if you don't get to a gas station. And so you pray and somehow you believe the car got there, even though it should have probably been out of gas by now. I mean, I can remember uh, when I was younger and running around a lot, uh, I pulled up to the gas pump. I, you prepaid, that was when they just started all that. I ran inside, prepaid for the gas, ran out, jumped in my car and drove away. I never pumped the gas, I was in a hurry. And then I had to go back later because I was running out of gas. Told them I'd already paid and left. But you shall receive power. Lord, help me. Maybe physically I'm having some struggles here. I need your help. And we know that at some point in time, I, we've had some of our brothers and sisters and loved ones go back to be with the Lord or go home to be with the Lord, not back. They'd never been there before. Uh, we want to make sure of that. But they're with the Lord now. And so in that, we know that some point in time, we're going to be there too. But if it's before the Lord's done with us, you, me, whoever he chooses, suddenly it's like there's a turnaround. And some people will say, why them and not me? And we'll say, why me and not them? Uh, but the Lord does what he will in all of that. And I'm not going to say it's because you had more faith and they had less faith. Uh, you know, some of that could be involved. But then again, sometimes there's things God's going to work in all that. We just got to trust him, right? It says that precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. You know, when one of us gets to go home. So, you shall receive power after that the Holy... Are you dismissing any of this yet? Are you sure? Okay. Uh, like, well, you know, I got this, so, like I said Sunday, the person who says, well, why should I come up for prayer? Because I'm just going to have it anyway. Um, that's, there's no faith in that whatsoever. <clears throat> You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. What did we talk about Sunday? A little bit of the Holy Ghost and the purifying of the heart, right? He's a, God is a consuming fire. In fact, I shared at the Tuesday morning prayer meeting just real briefly uh, about uh, the 
Hebrews there about being a consuming fire, about the fire purging us. We talked about purging the dross and everything on Sunday. Uh, at the prayer me meeting on Tuesday, there was another portion of scripture I used, and I forget, but it was about the Holy Ghost and, and fire. And oh, that God answers by fire. And so there were some pastors there from Greece that don't speak English. And so at the end, the pa one pastor said, can I read something? And so the pastor interpreting for him said, can he read? And we said, sure, go ahead. So he read Hebrews about our God is a consuming fire. And then he went on talking and I, th I sat there thinking, maybe he does understand English. I just said this. <laughs> anyway, he didn't. And they had to interpret for him uh, when we were just having a private conversation. So he went to the same scripture and read it. And I said, wow, this is good. So I probably didn't look at everybody and say, you guys know I heard from the Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> but, uh, or the Holy Spirit led us. But you shall receive power. And so in that, there's days when we don't even think about this, right? I mean, we don't even think. We got a situation. It's like, oh, well, we'll just... Why do we do that? You ever ask yourself that? Why don't I think about the fact that really I have the Holy Spirit and this power is working in me and I don't have to respond like that. I don't have to act like that whatsoever. I can just call on the Lord. Excuse me. If I had not come in John 15, 22, Jesus fully understood why he was here in the earth. He's going to talk about revealing sin, basically. And, you know, that's why a lot of times people don't want us to say anything. Because we might reveal something. In John 15, 22, he said, If I had not come and spoken unto them, <clears throat> they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. Now, these were some of the rabbinical order and the priests and so on. And so he's saying, if they hate me, which I think we read through the scripture, we realize they hated him. He said, they hate my father also. Now, Jesus never lied. Right? He only spoke what the father gave him. So the father is the one who is saying, if they hate Jesus, they hate the father, they hate me. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. And what's he talking about? Somewhat the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit in, in what was going on there and how they treated him and treated uh, the word of God and the spirit of God, doing despite to the spirit. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this has come to pass, that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. We go back in the Psalms and we read it. They hated me without a cause. And he says, but when the comforter has come, whom I will send unto you, he's talking to the disciples and the people, the followers, send you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And how did you and I bear witness that Jesus really is God? The Holy Spirit. He testified. He shall testify of me and you also shall bear witness. You and I bore witness. There's something right about this. There's something about this that I need to obey and submit to. There's something here that... Like I said in my early days, if that's the truth, I'm going to hell. And I was convicted by that and brought me to change because of it. When the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, remember he's with the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. And I know there's some diversity here about what he meant. Did he mean because when he started his ministry in the beginning, they were with him there? Or did he mean that uh, the Lord had already chosen them and they were going to submit 
and would follow and so on, and that he knew those are the ones he said, of all you gave me, I've lost none uh, but the uh, son of perdition. So the disciples are told that there's a helper coming for them, right? And for all of us, we're told he's already here. All we have to do is receive him. And so in the, as we teach about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the laying on of hands and what the Bible talked about, of course, we know in the upper room there wasn't really a laying on of hands, but from that point on, they laid hands and they received the Holy Spirit. And in a lot of those areas that they talk about, which is years and years later when Paul's out there laying hands with people, that they spoke in tongues. And in a lot of those places, what is it, Acts 16, I think, where does it say that there were people around that could interpret what they were saying or hear what they say? It didn't say that whatsoever. But they received the Spirit as they did, as it was with us, they said. So who can forbear these things? Um, but they spoke in tongues, just like as the upper room, in the upper room itself. So we have troubles. We cry out to the Lord. The Holy Spirit's here with us. He's our comforter. He's our helper, right? Uh, we get in situations. We see things we don't like or we don't want to face sometimes. But the Holy Spirit is here to help us through those things. So not to say, God, I'm not going to do this. God, I can't do this. God, I can't take this. Holy Spirit, help me through this. Holy Spirit, direct me and guide me. Show me so that I can be where you want me to be in these things. And uh, as the Holy Spirit uh, revealed things, we know that Paul had areas that the Holy Spirit told him about Asia. Don't go there. We could say that about some of our conversation. Don't go there. Uh, some of our attitude, don't go there. Certain locations, God may say, don't go there. You know, we talk about this Rahab ministry down here uh, that's actually coming to warn here very shortly. And so they go out on the street for these ladies and try to help and witness and minister to them and so on. And uh, some of them go right in the places of the clubs and various things. The guys that help don't go in there. The girls go in there and talk to the girls and minister to them and things. And you think, well, you know, you need the Holy Spirit in a lot of these things. But also, hopefully, men who would decide they would just go in there, the Holy Spirit would warn them not to go there because of the temptations and the various things that's going on. And that's why a lot of us, again, when I first got saved, I didn't go in any place that had a bar. Uh, one place down here that had the restaurant, we'd always go in the other door and go in and sit on the restaurant side. Uh, we would never go over the bar area because that's what we came out of. And so believing that the Lord was protecting us, but why did we feel that way? Because we see a lot of people nowadays, they don't have those feelings. They don't have those convictions. And that's why we need to pray more and more when he says, you'll bear witness because you've been with me from the beginning. You'll be my witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem and Judea. There's a witness here that's strong. Maybe we need to pray for this strong witness to be in people again because they may have lost all of that. Or if somebody tells me, well, I'm a Christian too, we sort of go, well, okay. You know, I don't want to ruffle any feathers or, you know, ask any questions where they might reveal that they're really not. I don't want to do that. Uh, but we really should because we're helping them if we do. Because then we could be like, what was it, Apollos? When they said to him, um, you know, unto what were you baptized? Well, John's baptism. And then they said they went on to teach them more perfectly the ways of the Lord. So was it for the good that they asked him? How deep are you or where's your relationship? Or, you know, what have you done so far? What have you been taught? What do you know about the Holy Spirit and receiving him? When Paul said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Do you remember their answer? He could have said, well, you must, you must have the Holy Spirit because you're believers. But he asked the question and he found out they hadn't even heard of the Holy Spirit. 
So did they receive what they didn't know of? Absolutely not, because then he prayed with them, and the Holy Spirit came upon them. Amen? So a lot of times when we have folks that come from other places and things, and as I said before, you know, if people are really looking and leaving because of some of these things that are happening where some of the churches have actually uh, cut out of their denominational ties and so people don't, you know, they sort of are spreading out because of some of those things. If they're coming out of one of those things, that's, you know, that's okay. If you're coming because you have an attitude toward the pastor in a church because he doesn't do what you want, then my obligation is say you need to go back and make peace with the pastor first and stay there a while and then if you need to leave you go to the pastor and talk to him and do what you have to do uh, at that point but uh, not to just flighty you know jump around and go here go there and so on anyway so the comforter our helper so if we pray what do you need What's troubling you? What is draining you? What are you watching out here that's going on that's really breaking your heart in some areas? Uh, you think about all these things. And some of these things may take more than just prayer. We may have to stand for some of them also. Uh, like if you saw, you know, a young person or a person being bullied, you might pray, but you might have to run in and stop what's going on. Uh, so the Holy Spirit's here. And just to be at peace with God, uh, you're enduring things you've never dealt with before. As I said to some of the guys before, you know, the pastor we had, strong man of God and so on. But he never dealt with what you and I just dealt with for the last three years. He never dealt with that. Uh, there were issues and things. There's areas where some men just feel real queasy about going into. And he had areas like that, just like I've had areas like that. I didn't know what to do when all this pandemic thing happened. I don't know, maybe somebody here did. Uh, but we never saw one of these before. We never knew the truth about what was really going on. Uh, we didn't know how volatile it could be or how mediocre it could be. We know some people suffered pretty tremendously. Other people had barely phased. Uh, we know people are still dealing with it now, still dealing with things from three years ago when they got it now. And uh, so in all that, I guess we all got to have a little bit of grace for other people and a little bit of mercy, and you may think you see something that other people don't see, and sometimes, you know, sometimes it's, it's like you don't really want to be in charge. I don't know if you've ever had that feeling, like when you gotta make a living, or you know, maybe because wives, you, you may not have had to do too much of that, or maybe you did, but you know, I really don't want to have to answer questions. I don't really have to be called to account. I don't really want everybody looking to me, and then if anything goes wrong, it's my fault. Uh, that's why I've told so many people uh, since I was put in place to do this that, listen, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to show you options. That's all up to you in the end. If you make the wrong choice, I'll be here for you. Hopefully you won't, but if you do, that way you can't come back and say, well, you didn't tell me what to, or you told me to do this, and it didn't go that way. You know, I can tell you don't ever use your crutches or your cane or your walker and stuff like that again, and when you fall over, uh, you don't have my faith. We can go back to the story about the fellow that was here that was HIV positive, and I shook his hand and told him, don't shake anybody else. They're not me. Uh, I never got it, and so on, and uh, whatever, and he died from it later, but he got saved. Anyway, we could go through all those kind of things. There's a lot of things uh, that I might believe in the gospel that you don't quite get. And maybe I've been tried in them, and so I'll do them, and maybe you haven't quite been tried in them, and whatnot. It's just like people say about going out and evangelizing. Some people don't want to do that. Well, actually, if we could all realize the Holy Spirit working in us, we can, doesn't the Bible say we can do all things? 
which strengthen us. So if I go talk to people and I'm winning them to the Lord and I'm realizing these are little barriers that they're facades, God takes us through all this stuff, no matter what they say, how the devil rages or anything else. Look at that. The devil just raged through that person. All of a sudden we're praying and they're accepting Christ in their lives. Um, we can all have those experiences. But if you say no and I say no, we're not going to have those experiences, right? So he's here to comfort us. Trying times come. He's still here to comfort us. Don't forget that. And he's here to walk with us in all these things. So he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Matthew chapter 3 and Luke chapter 3. Jesus himself said. Or I'm sorry, John said. I'm looking right at it. John said. <clears throat> Okay, so what have you purposed in your heart from what we just heard, all you Daniels? Some places they'd call you Karens. I'll call you <laughs> Daniels because we're, we're having faith here. Uh, so what have you purposed in your heart to do? And then remind yourself and remind the Lord that this is what I'm purposing to do and believe him to help you bring it about. Right? It's no different than we, you know, when you, maybe when you first fasted. You know, I want to try to fast. I'm going to purpose to fast. And you'd never done it before. And, you know, after about 12 hours, you start feeling finicky and, you know, like you're faint and whatever. And then you realize on the third day, that's all behind you. Such is a lot of life. Amen? So, Father, uh, we thank you for this night. Thank you for the word. Uh, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you that our hearts don't have to be divided. Thank you that we can purpose in our hearts, and you will help us bring that purpose to pass. You said if we commit these things to you, you are able to bring them to pass. So we give you thanks and praise tonight for all these things, uh, Lord, that you are working and doing in our lives. And just pray, Holy Spirit, as we are before you tonight. You're here in the midst of us. You dwell in us. We've received you by faith. We walk by faith, believing you're here and working in us. And thank you that you're doing these things. And so we just pray in your mercy and grace, Father, to fulfill what you'd have us to do. And I pray anybody listening tonight, realize the Holy Spirit is here. If you haven't received him, according to what the Bible says, uh, somebody laid hands on me and a week later or two weeks later I was praying in the tongues and uh, things were changing in my life and I knew there was something happening uh, because I obeyed and did what this, the word of God said and, and how it enacted having the spirit and I know yes there are those who can maybe receive the spirit without having hands laid on them but don't do that or say that because you're not going to submit. Realize that if God has an order He's doing that for your, your good and your benefit and our protection. And, of course, we can't receive anything that's evil. He said that in the scripture. He knows how to give good gifts. So we don't have to fear receiving the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit would work in us. We thank you for that also tonight. Just pray for, for those that are listening and us that are sitting here uh, taking in this word tonight. Father, that you stir every one of us. And thank you, even though a lot of us, we're getting older, a lot of the younger people are growing up and getting older. They've got other desires and other things. Uh, they may be in a different lifestyle like it was with Daniel and things going on, but purpose to not defile ourselves. Pray that for all of us with the things of the world, the things of the flesh. Lord, with the grandeur of what would be like in the king's palace. Father, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you for the victory. Thank you for the blood of the lamb, that spotless lamb that was shed for us. Thank you for him ascending back to you. Thank you for him sending the Holy Spirit. You said he proceeds from the Father, right in the presence of God. We thank you for that tonight. Give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Thanks for being with us. We're glad you're here. Hope you're ministered to. Realize that you need the power of the Holy Ghost in your life and you need now more than ever before 
as they talk about shortages of all things. And the Bible says there's a time when there will be a shortage of the word of God. He calls it a famine of the word. So get as much as you can, store up as much as you can, pray and prepare yourself. As a man prepares his uh, pantry in a shortage time, uh, as a man stores some water or some gasoline or whatever the case may be, store up the Spirit of God. Make sure there's oil in your lamp. You don't want to run out right before the bridegroom comes. Amen? God bless. And we don't want